Hi, my name is Matt from ClickBid, and as you can imagine, uh, we are working very, very hard and hearing a lot of stories about the impacts of the coronavirus and how it's uh, changing the fundraising world this spring. In response to that, one of the things that we want to do is to try and help. Uh, we've seen a huge outpouring of businesses around the country offering discounts, holding off on fees, and so on, and we want to be um, responsive as well. So for the month of March, uh, we are going to be offering a free license to anybody who wants to run an online auction. In doing so, I wanted to do a tutorial on how to quickly and easily set up that license so that you can auction off items immediately. You can auction them off five minutes after you set up your license or you can plan an auction in the future. So to get started, um, I'm just going to dig in and we're going to set up an event and you can do the same thing with your account. So you would go to clickbitonline.com or uh, cbo.io slash signup and you'll get our signup page. I've created a keyword, MCB1, and you can use any keyword you want. I usually recommend keeping it short and something relevant to your organization, not necessarily a gala. You may want to reuse this down the road. My event date in this case is going to be for... 27 2020. I recommend using the date that you were going to have for your actual physical event, but this really is when the auction will close. Um, maybe a day after the auction will close. In this case, it's my birthday. You can set your time zone, your country, and then you can start to fill in the organization details. Now we're going to give you a chance to put in your information. This is to create the first bidder in your account. So go ahead and put in your mobile number. We're going to send you a text message as soon as this is created so that you can see exactly how things get fired up and rolling. And then what you would do is you would choose the free trial. You'd go down here to the mobile bidding event, the 795. And what I want you to do is put in the sales code of go bid 20. And that will set your license to zero. And then you can put in your charitable organization identification number. You don't have to choose these features, the dedicated advisor, mass messaging, ticket sales, and enhanced giving page to run an online auction. I personally do think the mass messaging is helpful, but it's not required. Uh, you can add that later if you want. I'm going to go ahead and say I'm not a robot because I'm pretty sure I'm not. And then process. It's going to take me right into my event so I can get started. I'll also get a text message. The one thing I want to point out quickly is on the welcome page, which you can get to by pressing home, you're going to see an important links block. This link is what you put on Facebook, email, any social media, text messages, you know, banners, anything you want to promote your event, mcb1.cbo.io. You can even click this right here to copy it and then paste it into your emails. To get your event set up so that people can start bidding, what you would start with is the software settings tab. Now we have an entire training, online learning, on how to use your account, but I'm just gonna go through and get you set up so you can run your auction right now. Under auction settings, at the very first item, I'm gonna come down here to payment. Right now we default to click bid, which is good. You're ready to go. Eventually we're gonna need your account number, routing, and bank name so that we can send you the funds after your auction. Under capture credit card fees, you have the option of charging the credit card fees back to the person who's making the purchase. ClickBit charges a flat 3.5%, which covers Visa Discover, American Express, MasterCard, per transaction fees, uh, PCI compliance fees, everything, the vaulting fees, everything that's required to make the system work is all covered in that 3.5%. If you want to charge that back to the customer, the donor, you can put in, I would just put in 3.6. There's a long explanation about that. You can read about it here, but just if you put in 3.6, it's all done. You can also put in a description. You can put in, um, help us cover the cost of credit card fees, well, credit fees. And then you can also give the guest the option to opt out of it. And I would say yes, just to give them the chance to not pay it. Um, most will, so you can go ahead and do that. And that's all you need to do to get up and running, uh, to cover those credit card fees when they check out or make a donation. Uh, and then next we're gonna move to landing page. This is what people will see when they come to your site. Remember that link I told you to copy and paste. 
I'm going to quick pop down to Event Central and then click on Landing Page. It's going to open my landing page in a new tab. So now I can bounce here between two different tabs. I'm going to go back to Landing Page Content. And then I'm going to make sure that Open Auction Early is turned on. This means that from today until the April 27th deadline, I am allowing people to bid on my auction. And then I want people to register to bid. So let's say that to yes. I do want to require a credit card and I do want people to check out from their phone. Notice I haven't changed anything. By default, this is all set up and ready to go. You can choose to require a credit card address. For online auctions, I typically say that's not required, um, but you can make that a requirement if you choose. Then under Page Settings tab, you have the ability to customize the look and feel of your landing page. Notice I have five sample items. I have the register and login box, and then I have my main banner. I can change all of that on this page settings area. I can choose a font if I want. I'm going to choose, let's do um, lobster. I'm going to choose lobster. And again, when you make changes here, you can pop over to this tab and hit refresh. Notice I now have a new font. Kind of cool. And then I can choose navigation. I'm going to leave all of this alone. And nothing changes on that. You, of course, you could change the background color if you want to something more relevant to your organization. Then in the main banner, you have two images that you can upload. What's called a wallpaper image and then your logo. The wallpaper image is what covers this whole area right here. I always recommend that you pick an image that's more of an action shot of your foundation or your organization. Something of you doing something maybe a picture of your last gala or a picture of a 5K race or something that you want to put in the background that gives people a really nice picture to look at. Then your logo can be uploaded and it will float right underneath this text and above the social media buttons. So first upload a wallpaper, then upload a floating logo. Down here you can change, I would go to banner area colors title subtitle Notice it says, welcome to our gala. Um, you would say, our spring fling online. And then, um, don't miss out, bid from home. And now if I leave this, it automatically saves and then I can refresh and it will change the title. And then social media buttons. This is important. I would definitely leave this social media buttons on. That's these buttons that you see here. But something new that we put out, and we're putting out new features to try and help with some of the challenges we're dealing with in the spring. One of the things that we added was a social sharing option to share individual items. It's off by default, and I recommend that you turn it on, say yes, and then keep an eye in this section here for this um, sample item. If I hit refresh, now I have these three icons, Facebook, Twitter, and a sharing button. If I click any one of these, it will let me share this item on Facebook, Twitter, or I can make a copy of the link and email it to, to Mac donors. I can email it to bidders. I can do anything I want. If you're using the mass messaging, you could copy it and paste it into a mass message. So then I can click on this. It copies that to a clipboard. Let's open a new tab and hit paste. And then look at this, I can share this online. You don't have to be logged in. You can send this to somebody's phone and they can look at it and think, wow, I want to bid on this. And then I just click bid now, lets me register to bid. I can look at the auction preview or I can go to the event landing page. I'm going to close this tab and then I'm going to continue back up to the top and go back to my social sharing and make sure that that's yes. The last section I want to look at in the content is the section A. By default, the, our landing pages come with a single section. You can change the title of it, the background colors, the font colors, and then you can put anything you want in the content. You can even upload a full screen background, again, another wallpaper, don't make it too busy. The text will sit on top of it. And so you can put anything you want in here and it will show up right here. This is a great way to get your event online immediately. We've only spent five or six minutes and we've got this thing online. Of course, we need to get auction items. So that's the next area. We want to pop down here to 
items, manage items. Now by default, we give you a handful of auction items in your event. Um, what I want to do is click all of them and go to delete. Check the box, type the word delete and update. I don't need them. So now I have no items available, but I'm going to start adding some. You do have the option down here. You can get a template that you can upload that will drop all of your items onto the auction. Uh, if you had a bunch of items in a spreadsheet, you can download our copy, paste the data into it, and then drop it on to upload 100 items, 200 items at once. Or you can add them one at a time. I'm going to call this uh, new auction item. Item 100, uh, it's going to be active. And the closing time, I want to be April 27th at let's do I mean this is an online auction so time really doesn't matter as much so I'm just gonna do 555 and that's on the 27th and the item type I want to be silent starting bid let's say the market value is a hundred and I want my starting bid to be 35 percent of that that's a pretty good rule 35 percent of the market value is a good starting bid and then increments usually 5 10 15 25 dollars um, in this case, since it's a $100 market value, I'll do $10 increments. A buy now price is available. That means somebody can just buy it outright, take it off the market, and they can own it. But you want to make it worth the effort. So you want $150. If the market value is $100, I'll take $150. Then I'm going to come in here to descriptions. I'm going to put in a description, exceptions, anything I want to say about the item, I can put in here. Anything like a blackout date, expiration date, you know, limit type of thing can go in the exceptions. Then I'm going to scroll down to donor information. If I want to add a donor, let's say you can add as many donors as you want to an item. If it's a package deal where you have wine, uh, a gift card, and uh, movie tickets, then you might have a donor for the uh, wine. So I'm going to do donor name is uh, Marcus Smith. And I want this to be the Smith family. This is what will show in the bid app, so that way people know it was the Smith family. But I need to know it was Marcus. What did they donate? They donated um, two bottles of wine. And the market value on that was, you know, $45. That's all I know about it. You can put in more if you want, more contact information. If you want to send out thank you letters, you can get their email and so on. And then I'm just going to hit save. Now, Marcus Smith is a donor. When they look at this item, it's going to say donated by the Smith family. Lastly, I may want to upload some images. So I have a bottle of wine here that was part of a default image. Uh, I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to open a tab here and I'm going to do a search for wine bottles. What I want to do is add this image. and it will upload that image and now I can add it to my display. I can upload 10 images per item and that's as easy as it is. You just grab the image, you can drop it on here, you can click to explore your computer and grab it and so on. Pretty simple. So now I'm going to say complete and go back and I have my new auction item. If I pop over here, close my search, pop over here and I want to refresh, I can see here that I have my auction item of wine bottles. If I want to bid, I can go register now, provide my contact information as a bidder and start bidding. It's very, very simple. So that's it. You get your auction items, boom, you're up and running. Make sure they're set to active, silent. If I have any questions, I can hit chat and I can go ahead and um, chat with whoever's available. I can talk to my customer service representative by going to training support and request support, and it will immediately connect me with someone that will answer my questions. This is a good stopping point. I'm gonna keep going because I wanna talk about closing your auction, but this is a good stopping point to get you started. But in a nutshell, at the end of the event, people will be able to check out. Because you let people check out from their phone, they're automatically able to start paying for their items, and then they can arrange for pickup. You can also get a list of who has won an auction item by going to reports, and event sales. This will show you what uh, has been purchased, for how much, who, who bought it, and if you want to start reaching out to them for pickup or delivery, you can do that as well. Also, under Event Central, you can go to Event Payments. 
at the very bottom here, you can see who has unpaid and who has completed payment. Very easy to see here in the list how this uh, shakes out, how many people have paid for their items, and how many people still need to pay for their items. You can also check people out directly from the unpaid checkouts, or you can run a batch as well. Again, all of this is covered inside of your uh, training hub. I definitely recommend clicking on this. We offer some great tools and resources to help you get going. Uh, we have some you know, getting paid, your next event, and then uh, different guru training levels that show you how to use our platform after the event. Again, the goal of this video was to help you get set up running with your free license so that you can start selling auction items immediately after sign up.